thin. There we go. Welcome to the nearly 1 a.m. stream. I mean, I knew I was going to be late this week, but I didn't think it was going to be this late. Like, I went to a concert tonight, and they stopped playing around 11.30, and that was a little bit later than I thought, and Jesus Christ, just late, late, late. So I'm here, I'm just gonna play Yoshi tonight, um, and talk a little bit about the Smash Brothers Mini Direct, or whatever the hell you want to call it. It was actually really good. Open, shoot. So, yeah, we still, we got, we got some worlds. I, I feel like the game is a little loud, even though it's probably not. I'm just going to lower it a bit. Anyway. So, yeah, um... I'll tell you about today. I have some stuff to talk about for sure, but uh, it's weird because when I say that the Smash Direct was good, there are people that are in chat, like, doing, um, uh, Resident Sleeper. Like, Joker Resident Sleeper. Like, I don't know who that character is, but it's it's still a new character. Is that, like, a thing? Do people just not like the character because it's not their character? I no, really, I didn't know that there was a backlash. I was really, I just genuinely curious why people don't like the character. I don't know what the fuck game it is, but I think it looks he looks cool. He's got a gun. It just says gun. But anyway, um, give me one second. YouTube stream is now going off, and here we go. So yeah, this is the only game I'm playing tonight because of the unforeseen consequences. Go to the first place. Go for first place in your solar car. The car gains speed in sunlight, loses speed in the shade, okay. Interesting. Oh my god. Where the fuck did this come from? I didn't know this game was gonna get like this. Mental. Oh shit, missed some coin. Oh, I can use the eggs to- <laughs> I can use the eggs to destroy. Get in there. Yeah! Oh, this is- this is cool. What a fucking clever idea this is. Oh, fuck. I have to remember that the car does not just- Go left or right doesn't turn on a dime. Oh, extra solar power. We're going mental fast now. I've never feared the shadows of paper airplanes more in my life. Well, we're not getting those. Mmm. I'll be with you guys in a second, verbally. Kinda can't do that right now. Verbally, I am stuck in a, in a Yoshi hell. Yoshi, move to the left. Move to the left. You can't move to the left when you're in an egg. I'm not gonna get first place, am I? How long is this fucking level, too? 
Oh, wait, maybe. Maybe. Oh, yes! Sniped! Well, that's exciting. I missed everything, but I completed the level at least. Okay. Okay, I still got a couple flowers and. Alright, yeah, fine. That's not bad. I didn't miss everything. I missed two things. I'll take it. Anyway, everybody, welcome to the stream. I know this is a late stream. Like I said, this whole week is going to be a stream of late. I wouldn't be surprised if my usual crowd does not join because it's so damn late. Hey, Yoshi! How'd you like Cheery Valley? So much to see. So much to do. I've been hoping for a souvenir. I'd love a bottle hut, please. No, I'm not doing fetch quests, dude. Uh, but yeah, I saw a concert tonight in Brooklyn. I saw the Claypool Lennon Delirium. Which is a weird name. Delirium, huh? Okay, well. But anyway, uh, aside from that, I mean, it's, it's their two names. It's a selling point. So... You know, that's good. But they were great. You know, if you would have told me years ago that John fucking Lennon's son would end up being in one of my favorite psychedelic bands, I wouldn't have believed you. I just wouldn't have. But he is a good guitarist, songwriter, and singer in his own right. Oh, nice. And, you know, I've talked about the album, I've played songs. They've done two albums and one EP of covers. So anyway, I, I go, and uh, when I got tickets, I did the meet and greet option, because there's an option to meet them and, and do a Q&A and talk to them. And I did that. And I I said, yeah, I want to do that. I want to... A, I don't care if it's a little bit pricey, because I like them. I want to support them. I've listened to their albums on Spotify, more or less for free. So yeah, I did that. And uh, the first things first, they gave me a... Sh <laughs> they gave me a phone charger with the album cover, like hastily printed on it. That was the exclusive item that I got. Um, which, I don't know how cheap phone chargers are, but... I have several, because when you go to, like, conventions, like PAX, and you go to see the Newegg booth, they just give you them. They're like, oh, here! So I've got, like, five of those, currently. Um... It seems like it'll, like, it's one of the types that I'm, I'm, you know, it's nice to have it, and I'm very, uh, grateful that I have it as a piece of a, a collector's item, I suppose. But I'm not gonna use it. I have an anchor one that's that's pretty good, so I use that one. Um, okay, so be afraid of the dark. All right, so so I went and then they did the Q and A, and I asked uh, Sean if he ever considered doing a collaboration with the Flaming Lips and Tame Impala because his old band opened for them, which I saw, and he said that he worked with the Flaming Lips and he's known them since he was like 20, but no Tame Impala collaboration in the works. If he sees you, run away. Um, and you know, it's funny because I think that they, they would do a good collaboration. They both have similar strengths. And, uh, anyway. So then, uh, they, some dude... So the Q&A was like only about a half hour, but it was weird. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. This is not the level I want to be talking during. Holy shit, dude. Why do I feel like I hear the volume of the t-, t hang on a minute. Mute. No, it's just... What's going on here? Oh, it's on my speakers. It's on my speakers. I thought it was on the... I thought it was on the TV. Did you hear an echo chat, or no? No. That's good. 
feel like there might be a way into this building. There doesn't seem to be anything over here. Well, um, the Q&A happened, and... Some... People were asking some decent questions, but one dude... ...who looked exactly like Les Claypool... ...based on the outfit that Les Claypool wears, the way he does his, his facial hair... Like, the whole, he was like a clone. And he says he, he didn't want to be up front because he didn't want Les to see him again. So I'm thinking this is like a, a Les Claypool stalker guy... ...who just goes to every show... ...and there was an incident... I don't know, I could be wrong, but it was very weird and, and he was very strange in, in the line and I was a little worried, but anyway... It was fine, he ended up asking a question, or rather he did a joke. He was like, what's the different difference between roast beef and, like, milk? And then, like, the punchline was something like, you can't roast beef. That was his question. And then Les Claypool told a cornier joke, so he didn't feel so terrible. Oh god. I don't know, it was something really bad, chat. It was really bad, but that was the, the joke. And, uh... Boy. Anyway, after that... Um... Part of the, the meet and greet was a picture. So your old streamer, your, your humble... Narita... Decided to, uh, get a picture. Cause that's part of it. And, uh, I got a picture. And your old friend, Vin, who doesn't know how to take pictures properly, still doesn't know how to take pictures properly. But I, I, I got a, I got a photo. So that's them on stage, which, um, very simple setup, very, very good, good sound. And that's, that's me with them, and I look at just, the lighting here isn't doing me any goddamn favors to begin with. But... Yeah, there's Sean and Les Claypool. There you go. I did it. Vinny, you look scared. Well, at least I have eyebrows in that photo. Vinny, did you get to hear the Ghost Blowjob song? Yeah, I'll talk about it. So, yeah, the, the the opening band was pretty good. There was a dude wearing, like, a see-through vest. Like, what would you even call it? It was like, uh, mesh. It was mesh and, and shoulder pads. Um, really, really bizarre, but, but good. Music was good. And, um, he had a really, like, he did the smolder face a lot. Like, while he was performing. What band? Uvi? Uni? I, I don't know. But they were pretty good. Anyway. Yeah, so Claypool, Lennon, they did um, most of the songs that you probably have heard on the stream. A lot of the new album, some of the old album. They ended up doing Astronomy Domine from Pink Floyd, which is a cover they do. Court of the Crimson King, which was fucking sick. Less Claypool on bass on that song is nuts. Then they did a Beatles cover, Tomorrow Never Knows, which, by the way, um, fucking Getty Lee from Rush joined them on stage for that a couple, like, about a week ago. So, pretty crazy, pretty crazy tour they're, they're doing. Uh, one of the songs they said that they couldn't... They never got live yet. They couldn't figure it out. Like, it just eluded... It eluded... Eluded them. The Toady Man's something something. And it's a good song, but apparently it's a real pain in the ass for them to play. So, they had a bet that... They were trying to figure out what the first night would be that they got it all the way through. And Sean would give the audience $1,000... If they got it right. Which is, you know... They were just gonna stop. Like, the idea was, if they called it the Toady Man Roulette, where as soon as they started fucking it up, they would just stop. And, uh, they made it all the way through. They did it. We were the first night. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Good job, guys. Um, and then they ended with a Primus song. Which was fucking amazing. They did Southbound Pachyderm. 
my one of my favorite Primus songs, and the, the audience went pretty nuts. It was a kind of a dead audience, though. A lot of weed. Oof. I don't mean that in, like, it's not a bad thing, necessarily, but the type of band they are is a lot of lethargic, like, tired people listening to psychedelic music. And I don't think they were very energetic, because the, the crowd reactions were not what you'd want as a rock band, in my opinion. But then, um, Sean was like, well, our next song is very controversial. You know, we got a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of trouble over this. And, uh, you know, just, if you're, if you're upset by it, don't complain. It's about a woman who had chose to have sex with ghosts. And, um, well, here it is. And then he just did the song about the ghost sex. So, it's called Amethyst Realm, if anyone's wondering. So, good show. Really good show. I, my upper back was killing me. I got there early for the, the Q&A, and I was just standing a lot. Um, I did get a signed poster. That was part of the Q&A package. So, that was cool. I liked it. I had a great time. A couple friends ended up going there. Um, so, that was the show. And I had a fantastic time, and I'm... Vinny, why do you think people watch streaming? Uh, I have some answers to that question, if it's a serious question. No, before I, I continue, I had to get food on the way back, so that was a little bit of a, a fun thing. I'll tell you about that. But I got a- I got a tweet... ...just a couple minutes ago. Don't! Hang on. I got a tweet... ...like, a half hour ago, and I don't normally do something like this, but I'm gonna do something like this. Can anyone... Decipher or interpret this chat message. It would be very helpful. Vinny Vine Sauce, just you're not streaming. Stop. Reset chat. It's getting annoying. Vinny. Just you're not streaming. Stop. Reset chat. It's getting annoying. What does that mean? Were you guys yachting really hard? Like, an emote only? Or did he want me to turn the chat on? Oh my god, this level. This, this level is murderous. Anyway, so that was something that was fun to, uh, fun to see. Um, I- so, uh, after the show, I needed to get some food. And I wanted to still stream tonight, and I wasn't looking at... Oh my god. Can't get those eggs. Never mind. And so, I wasn't looking to just stop and eat at a restaurant or anything, and I was already running, like, kind of late. Not that I have a schedule, but at the same time, I wanted to do some streaming. So I ended up stopping at a McDonald's, which isn't my first choice of food, ever. So there's a line for the McDonald's. They're taking their time. There's people, like, from Uber Eats running up to the drive through window. Anyway, I get to the window. I just got... I'll tell you what I got. I'll, t I'll even tell you what I got. Because that's relevant to the story. I got... a bacon quarter pounder... with cheese... and a six-piece chicken nugget. That's all I wanted. And they tell me it's twelve dollars and thirty something cents. I'm like, wait a minute. So I pull up, and I'm thinking like, twelve dollars and thirty something. That's no. This is fast food. What the fuck kind of price is this? So I'm waiting ten minutes or so or more for my fast food. Where is it? Got it. Okay. So I'm waiting for my fast food that's not going real fast, and, uh, I pull up to the- I'm like, excuse me, how much of the chicken- like, uh, did you make it a combo? He goes, oh no, sir, it's just a sandwich, and he said sandwich. He fuck chat, he said sandwich. I don't know if he was fucking with me, or if he just- 
always said sandwich, but he said sandwich several times. I said, well, well, how much are the chicken nuggets? Four dollars and something cents. I said, wait, 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 wait excuse me? Four, four dollars? I said, that doesn't make any sense for, for six chicken nuggets. At Wendy's, that shit's like a dollar fifty, son. That's mental. That's a, that is too much money. So I'm like thinking about canceling the order. So he goes, I'll tell you what, I'll throw in a small fry and we'll make the amount three dollars. So from four, like twenty five to three bucks, if you add a small fry, which that doesn't even that doesn't make any goddamn sense. So that's that's a deal they have. Vin arguing with fast food clerks over price is peak boomer, someone said in chat. Now, you're telling me, oh, 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 you're just going to accept that price. You want to pay four twenty five for McDonald's McNuggets? Oh, be my guest, dude. Give McDonald's your extra money. They want it. That's what they want. McDonald's is inventing boomer culture so that you'll not do it. So you'll just accept that a fucking six piece nugget is four dollars and something cents. McDonald's nugget prices. I'm good. Sorry, I had a moment there. It says here, a 20-piece nugget is $5. What the fuck is the jump from $4.25 or so to $5? What are you talking about? Hang on a second. I'm going to the, the six piece nugget. I'm looking for it on the on the Mick value meal. I don't even see it on this menu. They're keeping it off the menu because they know they're robbing people. Even the fucking kids meal six piece nugget is only four bucks. But hey, I got a small fry with it and the, the fries. Let me tell you about these fries. Cold, floppy. Like, really, like, not chewy. I wouldn't say chewy, but moist. What a good McDonough experience that was. That was a fantastic experience. I had so, so much fun. And I got uh, my money's worth, absolutely. I feel absolutely disgusting right now, so... Yeah. But sometimes you gotta eat, and sometimes you gotta eat. And sometimes when you need to eat, and there's only one thing around... One thing open. Vinny, why didn't you go to Burger King instead? Oh, hello, John Burger. Uh, the answer is that... As I was heading back onto the highway to get back to Staten Island... The McDonald's was right there. It's- it wasn't like, you know... I didn't think to myself, boy, I would love a, a, a handsome Burger King Burg. Or a McDonald Burg. It was just utility. It was there, it was easy, it was- it was quick. Oh my god. Stop this. Even though Review Bra was like, he reviewed um, some Burger King abomination, and he said it was one of the best fast food burgers he's ever had, and that was recent. He put his little fingers on it, you know, and his long arm, and he was like, hmm. The Angry Whopper, that was the one. Anyway, that was a cool level. It was especially a cool level to try to talk, like, about random other shit and play that at the same time. Vinny, don't you make fun of my boy Review Bra. No, it's okay. I make fun of myself just as bad, if not worse. I actually really like his videos for some weird reason. I don't know why, but... He's a good lad. I like him.
Um, we can talk about Smash Brothers in a couple minutes. I feel like there was something else I wanted to say. Or mention, or... Oh, okay, that's... Okay. Stealth level. I saw another glove today. Just another random glove. And I had someone even... ...email me saying that as I was telling that story... ...about the single glove and Tom Hanks... ...that they themselves found a glove. Like at that exact moment. So, I don't know what the hell's going on here, but... Someone's having a joke. Someone's having a laugh. Oh, I forgot to wear a costume. So, but yeah, I, I mean, you know, it was, it was a good time. Uh, I, like I said, I have another concert this week that's just random. Like, I'm only going to... I think four or five concerts this whole year that I'm aware of. Which is, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do. That's, that's, I save a lot of my money that I tend to spend... ...a little bit on concerts because it, it's... I'd rather spend the money on experiences than, um, objects. That's the way I always describe it. Like, yeah, objects are nice, too, but experiences are maybe even a little better. But that's for me. So I have one more concert that just incidentally happened to be this week. And no, I'm not going to tell you who it is, you stalker people. It's Nick Mason from Pink Floyd. Um, he's doing all the early Floyd stuff. Um, Sid Barrett era. Um, up to metal. Saucer full of secrets, all that fun stuff. Do you save your ticket stubs? I don't because it's all online now, really. Um, like, I didn't even have a physical ticket for the show I went to tonight. Damn it. Someone in chat just said, now I just need to know what seat you'll be in. Oh, um... Yeah. I'll be a, a seat F.U. I believe is the seat. So wait, if I, if I see someone staring at me instead of the show, I'll know it's you then. What a bunch of horse shit that is. Benny, why didn't you get Taco Bell tonight, my bro? Again, it was there. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I would have preferred that. Honestly, I really would have preferred that. But it would have been hunt down a specific place or just go to McDonough, which was right there. Anyway, someone said before, Vinny, why do you think people like to watch streams? They come for the content. Now, have you heard the content that you've been given so far tonight about the glove? About McDonough? About the guy who told the bad joke? About me not having eyebrows? This is quality shit you can't really get on network TV. But I think it's more than that. If you want a real answer, I can give you a real answer. I think it has something to do with the fact that... I don't know, it's, you get to share games. It's not produced, so it's just kind of like a dude talking, which... You really get a sense of who someone is through a stream. 
Um, you can interact with them. If you r watch the right streamer, there's uh, little to no corporate interference, so they can say how they feel about, you know, games and movies, and not feel like they have to take a paycheck. You know, if you watch, like, a late-night show, and let's say Angelina Domique, whoever that is, it's, it's a famous actress, don't worry about it. Let's say Angelina Domique is on the screen, and, you know, uh, Stephen Conan, Jimmy Bolbear, Bolbear, Jimmy Conan Bear is interviewing them, and Angelina Domique gets on stage, and, and they're, they're talking, and, uh, they're like, Wow, this is a really great movie, you know, I really like that movie that you're in. And then you find out it's like the biggest piece of shit since Geely. I guess people get sick of that shit. I mean, it's one thing to be nice. It's one thing to be nice to someone, like, if you don't like what they've done... ...and you just want to, like, spare them the hurt feelings, that's fine, that's understandable, but... ...you know, I don't think any of those late-night guys can say anything bad about the movies that the guests promote. Jimmy James Colbryan. Yeah, that's him. Um, other people like streams for background noise. Just to keep them... Oh wow, I've, I've done terrible on this level so far. Oh, people like streams because of the background noise. They get to hear some game stuff. They get to hear someone talk about weird topics for hours. Um, some streamers do more interaction than I do. So that could be a factor. Maybe some people want that interaction. I'm, I'm really considering just starting this level over. a shame. So the level's hard, and I have a lot to say tonight, which makes things double difficult. Um, yeah, it's free. Streams are free. <coughs> Mostly. You don't have to pay to watch most streams. You don't need cable. You know, it's just something to watch. I think the other reason, probably my favorite, and the reason that makes the most sense to me, is say... Because I have to wrap my head around this a lot. Like, why do people like me? Why do they want to watch my streams? Why do they want to meet me at conventions? And it's not me. It's the voice. Yahoo! No, actually, what it is, is... <laughs> what, what, what it really is. And the answer I like is that, say people cannot afford a video game that looks really cool to them. and they just want to watch and see what it looks like. Maybe they just don't want to buy it because they've, you know... They're, like, iffy about it. They're like, ah, I'll watch someone else play it. That's good enough. Oh, there's something up there, too. That was the first flower, I guess, up and to the right. What I thought was a secret area is actually the way to go. Um... Explain why people like your Sunday streams, then. I laughed a lot yesterday. Or it's Sunday, sorry. As stupid as it was, it is entertaining. It's just dumb, funny, like... Funny streamer man kind of shit. Um, just turn your brain off, look at some garbage, look at games that actually exist that... Uh, why do they exist? Why is this game real? Who made this? Why did they make this? Um... Me making snide remarks, which is, I guess... Depending on if I'm, a, you know, having an off night, could be good, could be shit. 
It's just, it's escapism. And again, you don't have to pay for a cable subscription to watch it. Vinny, but you gotta pay for internets. True, but streams come free with the internet plan. So... It's like when you do one service and you get another one for free. It's that kind of thing. Become a Starbucks platform streaming member. Which will soon be the only place that you can watch the award-winning show Yidis Von Fetus. Um, you know, you gotta be a part of the Starbucks streaming. Otherwise, you're, you're gonna miss out on the award-winning Yidis Von Fetus. But don't worry. If you get a Dunkin' Donuts subscription, you get a free Starbucks subscription for Starbucks streaming service as well. So... You'll never have to miss an episode. Vinny, is Starbucks coffee good? The person who uh, asked that question, their name is Nope77. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, repeat your name. Nope. 77. I think it's overpriced and overrated. I think Dunkin' Donut is just as good. I think if I have to call something venti, then you've already annoyed me. So, congratulations if that was your goal. You know, I get shitty deli coffee, that's good to me. Made with love from some guy who works at a deli and wants to kill themselves, probably. Um... God. I go into some of these delis, and these deli workers do not look happy. But then, like, you know, there's people... ...that ask for really outlandish shit. I can't imagine that being a happy, fun job. I mean, I did it for a while. I want you to shave the ham. Like, paper thin. Thinner. No, I want it shredded. I want shredded ham. I need that bologna thick. I need it real thick. That's too thick. I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying for this. You have- you have to pay for this. No, I'm not paying for- get your manager, I'm not paying for this. Okay, ma'am, you don't have to pay for the thick salami. Whatever you don't want is fine. But, um, yeah, that coffee's fine. Starbucks coffee I had when I was in Boston because this is the lobby of my hotel and I just needed coffee. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. It does what it has to do. No, I want- I want the ham shredded. When you say shredded... Do you mean you want it in, like, flakes? Yes, I want ham flakes. Can you- can you make- yeah, paste. Can you turn this into paste for me? Can you get, like, a mortar and pestle and, like, grind up the ham? So that it- it, it like, kind of gets this gooey consistency? That would be... that would be great. I want to be able to drink my sandwich through a straw, please. So that was, um, but that was only the occasional deli customer. I actually remember when I worked at the deli, most people were really nice. There was a sense of community. 
people were like, you know, they would get to know you and you would talk and have little conversations. And like, you know, the nice people you'd actually want to make a good sandwich for. Like, my sandwich skills were not that great, but I put a little extra effort in and put like a little extra bacon on the sandwiches of people that were really good to me. Have I been yellow? Banana Yoshi? Yahoo! Okay. Um, Vinny, crispy bacon or wrong bacon? I like crispy bacon. So, we're in agreement there. Um... So Smash Brothers had a little mini direct, and there's not much I can say aside from the Joker character <laughs> looks like a lot of fun. Um, I don't know Persona at all, and no, I'm not upset that the character's in the game. I say the more the merrier, the more styles the better. I think the character is going to be ridiculous. He's got a gun. The name of the move is just gun. Which is the height of creativity. Meanwhile, there was these arguments years ago, like, you can't put a gun in Smash Brothers. Solid Snake has, has rockets and, and explosives, because you can't put a gun... Homeboy's got a gun. He's got some weird counters, knives, um, it... The moves look good, the stage... ...looks awesome. It's very bright and colorful, extremely stylized, has different colors per song. So, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the character. I'm probably not going to play Joker very much. But I definitely like the character's uh, moves that I've seen. So, very cool. Very cool. And I'm also much more interested in the stage creator. Which, I knew we were getting one based on that leak, and I had some theories in the past that, like, oh, maybe they'll get one eventually. I didn't think it was going to happen so soon, and I didn't think it was going to be so robust. There's a lot of shit you can do with the stage creator. Just the background layer stuff alone... ...looks awesome. There's going to be some good meme stages. But yeah, the different objects, it's, um... You know, Smash's editors have always been pretty bare bones. The whole thing about, like, Brawl having a stage creator was- it was nice. You could make some stuff here and there. It was mostly just, I'm gonna fall into a lava pit levels, stay away from the lava pit. But, um... Smash 4 had a slightly better one. Well, quite a bit better in my opinion, because you could just draw. You just draw your level. Um... This is also, this in Mario Maker is why Nintendo needs to release an official stylus, by the way. A conductive stylus would work just fine. Um, but yeah, the, the level editor looks great. And I think the, the, the sharing, Nintendo is still allergic to online sharing, in a lot of ways, like... I don't get why, you know, certain things just... they don't do... until it's way too late. Like, every other... Oh my god. Oh shit. Okay, well, that's good. At least it's not insta-death. I forgot, there was actually something. Didn't they just update something? They updated a game, and they didn't include any online functionality for it, like sharing. What am I thinking of? Maybe, maybe it's not Nintendo. Labo VR, yes, thank you. 
So Labo VR has, um, you can create your own VR... Shit. Labo VR, you can create your own little experience. You can, like, play with all the physics and... Just generally... ...do simple programming to create something... ...in VR that people might enjoy, but there's no online sharing. It's just for you only. So... So, when I saw that the stage builder of Smash had the uh, sharing functionality where you can, like, rate and, you know, check out different stages. I was pretty happy about that. That's- that's good. That's- that's good for streaming, too. That's good for me. Because that means, then, that I can, uh, sort and- and look through the lists and find out what levels are good. Very good. The video, um, player, and editor, rather, in Smash is the last thing that they kind of announced, aside from some, uh, me costumes, which I'm never really too keen on, but... I mean, they're fun, but I'm not, like, losing my shit over them. The video editor is cool. I probably won't end up using it. I'll do the stage editor, I'm probably not gonna do the video editor. Just because... You know, if this was, like, ten years ago, twelve years ago, I probably would have tried it out. And spent, like, a long time making Smash videos. But it's just the tools are nice to have. Gotcha, rat. Do you remember in The Departed, where the movie's about finding a rat in the police station and the mafia, and the end of the movie is just a scene of a literal rat Which I think is great, but some people are like, yeah, fuck you, Scorsese. Do you get it? Do you- do you understand what the image of the rat represents? Uh... The video editor, though, I mean, I'm- I'm, uh, I'm gonna probably end up watching videos. God knows there's gonna be an influx of GIFs and... You know, memes based in Smash Brothers, um, but the tools seem pretty... Again, I've used the word robust tonight, which is a nice word. I don't get a chance to use it very often, but it is a nice word. So, I'll use it again. It's, it appears to be a very robust editor for video and stages. So yeah, it's just another couple things to round out the package. I don't know if there's balance updates, but I'm curious to see what they would do with those. Maybe, you know, some buffs and a couple slight nerfs, I don't know. You know, everyone's in chat right now, um, talking about their main and how their main needs to be buffed. Hey, can we give pa Palutena a gun? She's not good enough. We need- we need to give her a gun. I'll be the first to say, though, Palutena does not need any buffs at all. She is a very, very good character, as is. No need for any more. I mean, maybe, um... Bowser Jr. I know people shit on Bowser Jr. Say that he's not that great. It's Castlevania and Mario World together, this stage. Kind of cool. Clock tower, plus one of the, uh, the castles. Yep, got a hundred percent. Some levels, man. Just some levels I can do it, some I can't. You again. You're driving me crazy. I won't allow you to go one step further. Giromatic would be happy about this. Got a little face and everything.
Oh my god. Think. Oh, okay. Okay. Whoa! Don't do that. Whoa! <laughs> Poor son of a bitch. And what are you gonna do if Crash's army comes across the wall? I don't know. What are you gonna do? <laughs> oh, egg can work too. Okay, okay. I, I wasn't sure if egg would work. I'm sorry, I was doing uh, the wrong voice. I meant to do. We're hungry, Tree Beard. <laughs> Not have food. What do you mean, Tree Beard? Eat some sunlight. We're gonna die, Tree Beard. Toto. Synthesize. This is why people watch streams, by the way. That person who asked before, Vinny, why do people watch streams? They watch so they can hear me do an awful Pippin and Treebeard skit. Where are we going, Treebeard? We will move. <laughs> From this tree. Bear, do you have asthma? <laughs> I think I have asthma after tonight's uh, concert. Do people hide? Like, how are people like bringing weed into these places? I wonder. I don't- yeah, I don't think anyone cares anymore. Either that or they're hiding in their balls. Someone said vape. The thing about vape is they're metal, so they'll go through- if there's a metal detector at the venue, they will be detected. So you gotta put them up your ass. That's the only way. And even then, they'll still detect it. And then they'll do a full cavity search. They won't do that, chat. But, um... I guess you could put, like, a joint in your balls and, and matches. Or up your, you know. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I like that light bulb. But yeah, it's like everyone had. Like, I, I'll show you here. I got a little something to show you. This is uh, some footage I took. So there's the, you know. There's them. They're doing Primus. Here, let me turn up the volume on Yoshi, so... Okay, we're, we're not gonna do that. Yeah, that smoke... That, on the left, is from a machine. I think you're gonna see on the right. I think there's gonna be a nice puff of smoke coming up soon, and it's like, that that was just the level of, of weed at this concert, in general. This was pretty cool. It was, it was really, it's nice to find, I've never been to a Primus concert, so it's nice to finally see Les Claypool do a Primus song. I'm trying to... Dude is a beast. Yeah, there we go. Here, I, ca I caught... I caught a perp. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Whoa, call the cops. Some more over there. There's, there's, there's a big puff again. I'm sorry, I don't mean to just point out weed smokers in the audience. Like, I'm not trying to blow anyone's cover. I'm not a narc. Um, I just... I don't know, I was amused by it, really. Because this, this has been, you know, most concerts I go to, there's a little bit. But since they decriminalized it in New York, people are going mental with the weed. So, the thing is, in New York, you could have a, a little bit on you, and they'll just give you a slap on the wrist, if that. No one- no one's gonna fuck with you anymore. It's not like Boston, where everyone was just walking and smoking, but... It's still- it's one of those things where it's not legal here, but it's also... ...not exactly discouraged anymore. But I feel like the concerts, since that happened, it's been like three or four hundred percent more weed. So I'm thinking people just like sneak it in and like, yeah, that's my joint. And then <laughs> the, the security guard's like, all, all right. As long as you don't have a weapon, yeah, come on in. Thank you so much for the help. Say, how'd you find your way out here? I don't really even know, but I'm a light bulb now. Yes, security, you need to check me. Okay, here, well, this is my Gotti. You come across whatever it was. Oh, the Infinity Gem. I saw that bluish lad zoom through here. You may want to hurry. Do you know what a Gotti is, chat? No, it's uh, aside from a horrible movie. Apparently this, this is the first result. It's a cigar filled with weed, I think, is that's what I remember it being. So it's just a full-sized cigar, but all of it is- is cannabis. I'm sorry for the weed humor, I'm not- again, I'm not condoning weed. Um... Like, I'm not saying go smoke. And then I just found- what is this? Is this dude smoking weed through a gas mask? What the fuck is he doing? Why does that picture come up? Yo Gotti smoking weed. It's a, a video with 34 views. It's a dude with a... This music is gonna go very nicely with this video, I think. <laughs> Usually the gas masks are designed to keep smoke out, but this mad lad found a way. They, they found a way to get the smoke in. Alright, here we go. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, so I might have gotten some contact high. Um, that's Mike's- if Twitch ever decides to drug test me for trace amounts of cannabis, I'm just gonna say, Alice, I was at the concert. Like, it was just there next to me. I, I breathed- it was secondhand high weed. Uh. It's the Mind Stone. Or something. Thanks for going all the trouble to gather these for us. At last, we've succeeded. His pushiness will finally see- Oh, McDonald's! We'll finally see his dreams fulfilled. Go back down, McDonald's. Ah, yes. All of our tribulations have been worth this faded day. I'm kidding, Chad. It's fine. Just had a little- <laughs> It wasn't- I wasn't, like, vomiting in my- <laughs> No, it wasn't that. I was just like a little a gas and nothing bad. It wasn't no. Relax. Mm. 
No, no. No, I'm fine. Finally, we got them all. Hurry up. I want to make my dream happen. I want to snap my finger. Of course, your stumpiness. Make a wish, whatever your stinky little heart desires. I want to see Endgame two weeks early. I like how this game manages to even turn inanimate objects evil. I want the biggest, baddest, most awesomest robot! Oh shit. Oh no, all the other- <laughs> Oh no! The Oshis are dead. Wow. Just like your dad. Oh wait, no, 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 you are your dad. Never mind. Truly mental. Huh. Oh. Oh, it's like the robot is playing with toy cars. That is... That is fantastic. This is it. This is Joshua's final battle. Did you know that Yoshi was in a band? Queens of the Stone Age. Yashua Hami. Someone had to say it. That really should kill the baby. Pro pretty much just crushed his guts. I, I still smell the McDonald's bag. Even though it's totally empty, like, the bag itself is now... Like, it, it has acquired the properties of the food that was stored within. Got no eggs. cool if there were Coopers riding these little rocket ships. <laughs> Cuphead, this is not. Still, though, it's a little bit more challenging than some of the other bosses. Mm. What was- <laughs> that shy guy was flying 
with nobody. Like there was no rocket. It was he was just flying on his own. McBag bomb has to go. I'm just gonna yeet it across the room. I live in a clean house. A nice house. It's without- it's out of smell distance now, so it's fine. I can just throw it- throw it out later. Um, well, three-year-old has just been stomped. Guts all, like, moist now. Um, what have you done to his pestilence? Worry not, I will help you. D -d 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 Do you have it? Guts! Sun Dream Stone, grant his imp impishness even more strength! Oh my, I may have overdone it. I never would have expected giant baby Bowser. That's so... unpredictable. The Mario series, and by proxy the Yoshi series in general, need some new villains. That's so why the Mario and Luigi games... We're, ...we're good at that. I still like when- I like Bowser best when he's, um, an anti-hero. Imagine being this big and having this many toys. <laughs> okay, that was pretty cool. This way. This fight uses the dimension of the game really well. Like, um, the 2D, but with a little bit of 3D. Not, well, you know what I mean. Not graphic wise. But yeah, this is- this is a pretty good fight. Pretty clever. I like it. Um, and also, Baby Bowser becomes Sephiroth for a couple seconds, so there's that. Well, 
okay, we're getting into some some platforming now. Okay. Okay. What are you doing with that? Mine now. I genuinely hope Baby Bowser is dead. How dare you do this to his pokiness? He'll pay for this someday. Scree. Gems back in. And so the Sun Dream Stone was finally restored. Together, the Yoshi streamed. Someone in chat just said, their wish, no more taxes. Can't take credit for that one. I've seen people get angry about the tax jokes. Everybody gets angry about everything. Read. My. Lips. Alright, let's head back home. Okay, well now they get to go home on a magical Yoshi ship. Good feel. Yeah. Yeah, good feel. Uh, I guess, I guess we can... Check and see if there's any extra levels available after this. Um, this game is good. I, I'm sad to be finished with it. If the game is truly over, I will stream something else tonight. Um, by the way, someone sent me this. What the fuck kind of prices are these? So apparently, they tried to charge me for a 10-piece, but they gave me a 6-piece. So, I got ripped off. And the prices already don't make sense. Four piece is more than a six piece. And a twenty piece is only 70 cents more than a ten piece. What the fuck, McDonald? Uh, I don't know, mate. Just get a twenty. There's got to be something in the nuggets <laughs> that they want you to eat more of them so that they gain, like, some kind of control over you as a host. Like, there's got to be some kind of, like, like parasite buildup, Las Plagas, 
every nugget gives you another plaga. Poochie's too pure for such things. Poochie, you'd never eat a McDonald's chicken nugget, right? I like the background. The, the skybox, quote-unquote. It's like a tarp. So, I'll give my review of the game now. I, as I usually do during credits. Um, I know I didn't see everything. I didn't do all the flips. The flipping world. I didn't do all of it. And I know there's bonus levels, so I might try to do some of those. But I'm still going to give you a kind of review based on what I've seen. Now, I don't like to give number scores. Ever. But sometimes I do, just because it makes it easier. So, I'll give this game... This is like an 8 out of 10 game. But, there are some aspects of it that make me feel like it's like a 7.5. And others that are really good, that are like 8.5. And they lived happily ever after. It's a fun, enjoyable game. It didn't blow my mind, but there's some really clever, cute moments, and um, it was just a nice 2D platformer that was chill and easy to get into, and also very reminiscent of Yoshi's Island in a in a good way, and also maybe not in, in some other not so great ways. I want Nintendo to take a risk with Yoshi now. <laughs> I know that's asking a lot, but I would love for them to take a risk with the series and try something completely different. Um, Woolly World was good. This is a little less good, but still good. So if they do another Yoshi game like this in, in a couple years, that's cool, but I'd prefer something, you know, try something different. Try 3D. You know, like do a third person Yoshi game. I, I don't know how that would work, but I mean, it worked for Mario and Yoshi's in Mario. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe something like a collectathon, but with Yoshi. Um, anyway, the Hidden Hills appeared. The Hidden Hills are now accessible. Go check them out. You've unlocked boss challenges. I mean, when you play a game like A Hat in Time, you see how 3D platformers can still work, if done right. And you can, you know, you can do, like, limited collect-a-thon. You don't have to do full collect-a-thon. You don't have to go, like, Donkey Kong 64 or Banjo-Tooie. You can just, you know, do, like, more Hat in Time or Mario Odyssey. Which, Odyssey... The main problem is the economy of, of the collecting in that game should have been... Uh, maybe it should have been moons and something else. Maybe like two things. The moons were just mental. There was too many, too many goddamn moons. They started not feeling like as good to collect anymore, but... Still great game, I love it. But I feel like for a 3D collect-a-thon, it's good to have a couple tiers of collectibles. Hi, you're Yoshi, yeah? Wait, thought so. <laughs> Wait. I'm a Sprout Blockerfeller. Wanna play hide-and-seek? I'll go hide in some places now, so you come find me, okay? Okay, off. If I go... I want you to consider this chat. Consider that I will never attempt to find that dude. Who will now be hiding, hiding and seeking for the rest of eternity? Hmm. 
Here we go. Hidden hills. Oof, I'm fresh out of energy. So desperately want to scale this mountain. Can you provide 30 flowers? Ah, thank you very much. Good as new. Ah, here we are. Oof. Oh my, fresh out of energy once again. I'll be needing more smiley flowers. Oh, you dickwad. Whoa, look at these. Got some poochy outfits and shit. Oh, these are expensive. Spend your nugget money, Vin? What nugget money? McDonald's has it now. They weren't even that good, too. Like, McDonald's nuggets are fine. They're not my favorite nugget. You know, I try to avoid fast food, but I still like a nugget from time to time. I find that, you know, you need a good sauce with McDonald's. And these were just like cardboard. I guess it was late, and they just didn't care. Oh god. What are you doing? Come on! Make a better burger! Um, oh yes, chef! What, you don't have passion? No, chef. I... Come on, you're a chef! I believe in you, you can do it! Um, chef, I just... um... Yeah, no, chef, I just... I'm working here part-time. Come on! Labo. So these are the hard levels now. Yahoo! Imagine deciding to put new music for only the bonus levels in this game. Good feel are on some galaxy brain. Imagine that, though. Imagine after you beat the game, you complete objectives to unlock new music. And you get the last couple tracks on the very, very last level. That's not what's happening, but imagine. Just imagine that galaxy brain. Lost a flower for this. 
This reminds me of one of Super Mario World's secret levels. I don't remember which one. The one with the balloons. Just because you don't ever get a chance to land. You know, in a game where you can fly forever, how do you make it challenging? I guess this is the answer. I don't have enough eggs for this. Fucking hell. God, get it? Imagine 100% completion on this level. You have to do everything... ...perfect. Get all the eggs. Do perfect mid-air shots. Gerard did it. Gerard does everything. <laughs> Gerard does everything. When we were talking at, at um, PAX, I wanted to ask him, like, do you ever regret that you have to now do this for every game? I missed one heart, and that's minus one star- one, uh, flower now. Wow, that level was fucking crazy. Even just to survive. Yeah, the, the opening band, like I said, the dude in the opening band tonight had a mesh shirt with shoulder pads, and I was joking that he was Rem Lazar. Even though Rem Lazar does not wear mesh so you can see his nipple, it's more just he's in like a superhero suit, I guess. I can walk, I can talk. Vinny, what did Gerard say? Well, he- yeah, I mean, he does regret being a completionist because of, like, games like Breath of the Wild, <laughs> but he likes what he does. He enjoys- he enjoys doing what he does, and he says it's really gratifying once he completes the games, but then you have a game like Breath of the Wild where they just- he was convinced that the Koroks were in that game just to fuck with him. But, um, he did it. He fucking did it, so. Probably were, to be honest, Nintendo knows about him. Didn't they do a video with him when Breath of the Wild came out? Like, he interviewed them. Pretty sure he interviewed, um... Aonuma. Today was Doug Bowser's first day at Nintendo. And, of course, he's leaning into that Bowser thing real hard. This is gonna be the easiest transition... ...ever... ...for a president. Just because of the name. The, just be the, and the memes. They gotta get a Mario after Bowser or Luigi. Otherwise, like... You know what's gonna happen? People are gonna get attached to this guy. I'm sure he's a good guy. I'm sure he's gonna be just fine. Um, he seems alright. He's been there a little while now, but... I have to wonder, like... The Reggie... Everyone loves Reggie, you know, but... They're giving this Doug Bowser guy a shot because Reggie endorses him and also because his name is Bowser and he's posting cute images of Bowser plushies at his desk. So, really, really smart, really good. But, again, 
if they have to get a guy after that. Uh, oh, eat, eat, a, eat a penis. Um, if they have to get a guy after that, they really need to get a guy named Luigi. And and if not, they're just gonna say, listen, we'll pay for you to change your name. You have to be Luigi. That's the only way. Our audience comes to expect a certain level of memality from our CEOs and presidents. Imagine what happens, though, when the company hits rough times because of Luigi. Well, I, I'd argue that Reggie was a very good public figure. Probably even a good president. I don't know what he did. I just like the guy, you know? But, um, he also was there during Nintendo's probably worst period ever. Even worse than when people were like, Nintendo is babies. Which is still happening, mind you, but, I mean, this was, like, this was a, a really- I thought for a while Nintendo was gonna have to go third party. I know that's the- the doom and gloom viewpoint that's been around since day one. Nintendo's always gonna go third party. Every time a little something shitty happens, they always go third party. But, yeah, Reggie- I'd argue that Reggie had- little to do with that. Whoever the fuck marketed the Wii U. Cast them. Cast them out. Is it Bill? It's Bill Trinan, isn't it? Whomst, may I add, I thought Bill was going to end up being the next president. Just because of recognizability, but... I mean, the dude... I don't know, I think he just... Is he just a translator, right? Or does he have a higher position at this point? Just... Translator? I mean, he shows up in, in Nintendo Directs from time to time. People have memed him. I like Bill, too, actually. I'm a Bill Trinan fan because he likes a lot of the same music I like. He goes to a lot of concerts. He's always posting about, like, Chris Cornell and shit. I guess he does live in Seattle. I was talking today, one of the people I knew that was at the concert was talking about how they were at Seattle for a business thing this past weekend. And, uh, he said the town is just, like, I'm sure we have some Seattleites in the, uh, audience tonight, but he said the town just breathes rock music, and it's a really cool feeling when you're there. So, one day I'd like to visit. Vinny, I'm wondering, do you have an NVIDIA card or an AMD? I have a... Um, NVIDIA... I have a 1080. So I could get a couple more and see one more level. Or we can just stop now and... Um, I can play another game for an hour.
can't, uh, Tetris? Jesus, I don't know if I can do Tetris tonight. Alright, let me think about it. Give me a minute. Um, I'm gonna stop playing this game. I don't think I'll come back to it. There's still two levels. It's four hidden levels total, right? Yeah, there's four. Uh, yeah, Smash is tomorrow. Three levels and a final boss. So there's a final, final boss. Last level requires 50 flowers. That's not happening. That's a level of completion that I, I do not think I can achieve. Um, not without a lot of work. There's plenty of opportunities to get, like, lots of flowers, but I don't want to do it, necessarily. I'm going to do this course one time while I think about what I'd like to play after this for one hour. No, Baba, I'm not feeling. I'm at the point of Baba where it's just frustration. I don't get galaxy brain feeling anymore. I just get, oh, I'm a dummy. And then when I complete the level, I just feel like, oh, I'm not as much of a dummy anymore. bird over there, I think. Got all those eggs thrown to, to no effect whatsoever. easy to do a double rapid fire in this game. But, you know, I just want to shoot one and then another one in rapid succession, but then it's just, it, you know, it just won't let me aim. This happens so damn quick. Okay, okay well. Ah, little, uh, monkey fella here in the jungle. Ah! This is a lot harder than, than it, I thought it was, even the first time I played it. I think the, the whole thing about Yoshi Baby Games is so much more overblown. Like, sure, they're there for, you know, babies, too, but... There's a lot of challenge in this game. Just gotta find it. There go. And I'm gonna go... I'm gonna get to the exit. Just short of 8,000, my goal. No. Give me one more elephant! One more!
this game gives me an existential crisis. I got all the red. Now that wasn't enough to unlock that level. But yeah, it's a good game. Again, it's it's a good addition to the Switch library, but maybe not for everyone. It's still pretty damn good though. So I I enjoyed this playthrough. Okay. Um I got to figure out what I want to play now. Gungeon. Do I have time for Gungeon? I don't know if I have time for Gungeon. Uh. I know what people want. Oh, tabs. Yeah, I could do tabs. I'll do that. I didn't finish Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. That's a good one. That would be just enough time to finish it, too. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and totally accurate battle simulator up next.